Welcome back to the Wealthy Idiot Show. We're going to talk about my favorite kind of investing, real estate investing. And before we begin, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I'll wait. Welcome back, friends and fellow idiots. My name's AJ. Today, we're going to get into how money is made in real estate investing. There happens to be four ways that you increase your net worth. So not all the ways produce actual physical cash, but they do increase your overall net worth and your growth of wealth. And one of them produces cash. And then lastly, we'll talk about the one way you get to keep your money and the trick in the tax code that lets you keep all of the cash that you make. So let's get to number one, renovation gap appreciation. This is where you buy a property under market value or you buy a property that needs a little bit of love. And as soon as you buy that property, add a little bit of love, it increases the value of that property. So in simple form, if you buy a $450,000 house and it's actually worth 500, you just technically made $50,000 in actual get in, in immediate appreciation, which is outstanding. This is how house flippers actually produce their money is by buying homes that are under market value and need some love, apply some love to it, turn around and sell it. And that gap is the amount of money that they make. Number two is actual appreciation. On average in the United States of America, a house appreciate, appreciates 4% every year. That's higher in areas where they're seeing significant growth. So hint, hint, look for an area that is receiving significant growth. But every single year, as your home appreciates, your net worth is growing. And as time goes on, we've seen that even though there's been dips like in 2007, 2008, possibly dip upcoming. Um, I got some news and some info on that. We'll talk about that in another video. But as that happens, overall, we're looking at the average over a 30 year time span. How's this seem to grow in appreciation? Now, one of the cool tricks about appreciation is that even though it's 4% for the whole price of the home, it's not 4% when you consider the amount of money that you put down in your down payment. So a quick example is if you bought a home for $400,000, let's say you put 25% down, that's $100,000, a 4% appreciation would see about $16,000 every year. But that's 4% of the whole home price, not your down payment. So $16,000 against your down payment of $100,000 is, is actually 16%. So you're seeing 16% growth on your money on average every single year just from the appreciation of buying real estate. And that's the average of 4%. So if you get in a good area and it's a higher appreciation, you're seeing a lot better growth over that 30 year time span. Number three, principal pay down. So theoretically speaking, you buy a property, you put a tenant in it and they pay you rent. So assuming you do all your homework and all that is actually working correctly, you're getting someone else to pay down your mortgage for you. One of the parts of a mortgage is principal. That means that the loan itself is getting shrunk down over time. So if you have a 30 year fixed rate loan, you're going to see the principal slowly decrease as time goes on until you owe no more money at the end of that 30 year time frame. But that means that the people living in the property are paying down the principal for you. So every single time you make a mortgage payment using the money that they sent you, you're going to own just a little bit more of that house. On the previous point, when we talked about number two, we saw that the house's value is going up and the loan that you have on the house is going down. So this amount is your actual wealth growth every single year. A quick example, using the same information that we used on the previous one, a $400,000 home. Um, in the first year, you're gonna see about $2,500 in principal pay down. So that's a uh, not the greatest ROI, but it's a little bit more than 2%. That's not bad, right? So if you add that on to the fact that your appreciation is going up, we said 16% um, in this case, uh, principal pay down is going about 2%. You're looking at a return already um, in the ballpark of just upwards of 18% every single year. The good news about principal pay down as well is that over time, the principal payments go up, your interest payments go down. This is called mortgage amortization. So later on your mortgage, so every single year, 
every single month actually, you're paying your principal a little bit more than you were the previous payment. So as time goes on, you're gonna see larger and larger growth in that principal pay down, which is just going to mean a better and better return every single year. Our fourth and last way of, of uh, increasing your wealth with real estate, and probably the most important, is cash flow. Cash flow is the difference between all of your expenses, your mortgage being paid, your property manager getting paid, and the uh, um, whatever else, uh, insurance, taxes, whatever, at the end of all of that, you're seeing a little bit of cash left over that you get to put in your bank account and use however you want. So you can turn around and spend that on cars, homes, whatever. Preferably, and what people like to do with this cash flow, and it's one of the main reasons people are interested in real estate in the first place, is that we like to get that cash flow to the point of replacing our current lifestyle. So if we're living a $50,000 a year lifestyle, we want to replace that with income from the cash flow from our rental properties. And that means that if something um, tragic were to happen, we lose our job, um, we end up in the hospital for some reason, something happens to a family member, at the end of the day, we know that we're secure because we have that income coming from our properties to cover our lifestyle. So that kind of financial security is or something you can actually buy and is what a lot of people are striving for when it comes to real estate. Uh, me personally, that's exactly what I'm looking for is to replace my current living expenses with the income from my real estate investments. All right, number five, the bonus point, how to save money via taxes. Well, whenever you run any business and owning real estate is in fact owning a business, it turns out that you get to write off all of your expenses against all of your income. So if you were to spend as much as you made in expenses and that ends up being net zero, well, you don't pay any taxes, which is outstanding. But the most important part of that is that we want to produce actual cash flow and we want to write that off and we get to through a trick called depreciation. We get to depreciate the home over a time span for the value of that or over a time span for the value of that property every single year. So as long as we can depreciate that home, we have expenses on the home, we can put that up against our income and it will look like we're making no money until that property either gets to the point where we can no longer depreciate it, which is sometime in the future, or we sell the property and then we have to pay taxes. But as it turns out, we get to transfer those taxes forward if we sell the property and turn around and buy a property that's almost exactly the same. This is called a like for like exchange in real estate, otherwise known as a 1031 exchange. So, all right, to sum that, I know that was confusing. To sum that up, what we're gonna do is write off the depreciation and all the expenses against our income it's going to make it look like we're losing money until probably somewhere around 15 to 20 years in the future when that time comes we're going to sell our property do a 1031 exchange into another property we'll pay no taxes and we get to start the depreciation process all over again with that new property and we get to keep all the money that we're making totally tax-free so oh, that was a lot of information and we're going to do more videos in the future explaining these individual bits um, so I apologize for exploding your brain with all of that. But to recap, one, we get to make money through renovation or gap appreciation. Two, get to make money through the appreciation of the home just over time. Three, principal pay down. Our tenants are paying our mortgage for us. Four, cash flow. Our tenants are paying a little bit more than our mortgage and we get to put that money in our pockets. And five, we get to keep all of that due to the tax code letting us write off our expenses in and depreciation of the home. So thanks, I wanna thank you again for stopping by. Real estate is one of my favorite forms of investments because of everything that I've shown you here. I have done extremely well in real estate over the last few years since I began uh, doing real estate. I know that the market looks a little bit crazy right now. We're gonna talk about that and what to do about that and how to protect yourself, make sure that you're not um, biting off more than you can chew, especially if you're just starting out. Um, but for now, I want you to get excited, look up as much information as you can, watch as many YouTube videos as you can. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.